Hi, this is Donna Dracunis, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Russian grafting to join the two edges of this piece together, and it forms a wrist warmer, forms a tube that's a wrist warmer or fingerless glove. So we're going to join those pieces on those two needles together, and we'll end up with this as the back of the glove and this as the front. And I have another one right here. Didn't weave in my ends yet, but you can see what's going to happen. We're going to join a little garter stitch here, a little garter stitch here, leave an opening for the thumb, and make a tube out of a flat piece. Okay, so back to here. We've got our two needles with the same number of stitches on each, and we're going to use a crochet hook to do this. So this is really easy with the crochet hook which is why I do it that way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a stitch off the back needle onto the crochet hook. Okay, so we got that on the hook. Now we're going to take the first stitch off the front needle onto the crochet hook and then we're going to pull it through the stitch on the back. Don't worry if there's a tail or not where you are. That stitch was at the end of the row, so it had a tail, but you don't need a tail. Okay, next one off the back, pull it through the one on the hook. Front, pull it through the one on the hook. Back, pull it through the one on the hook. Okay, so that's all it is. You just alternate from the back and the front, and then you take that, twist the hook, makes it easier to pull it through, and then you take the next one, again alternating back and front, pull it through. So you always just have one loop on the hook. We're going to do that for most of this, but we're going to leave a gap. So let me get up to the spot where we leave the gap, which is the thumb opening, and I'll show you how to do that part. Okay, I'm ready to do a thumb opening on this wrist warmer. So this is going to be the one for this hand. So there's a little bit here that's joined. Then we're going to leave about an inch and a half to two inches here. And then we'll join the bottom. So now we're up to the part where we want to leave the two halves separate. So what are we going to do? And well, we're going to work on each half separately. So since my hook is in the stitch on the back already, I'll work through the back. So I'll push the ones on the front, push them further on the needle so they don't fall off. You don't have to worry about it. We're not going to bother with that needle at all. We're just going to go along the back, pulling one stitch through at a time, always off the back. It's the um, same thing we were doing, alternating, but only on one side. And it's going to be a little tight, which is fine, because that makes a nice firm edge for the thumb opening. And you'll go ahead and you'll do that till your thumb opening is as long as you want. When you're done, put the stitch, the last loop on the hook, put that back onto the needle as a stitch. Okay, then we're done with that side. Now we go to the front side and we'll do the same thing. And we're going to take the first one off and then we're going to pull through the same number of stitches we did on the back to make the thumb opening. And I didn't make this right here big enough just to show you, but I want to show you how to join it back together. So I will do that, but this is going to be too small. I actually want to make a thumb opening that's an inch and a half or two inches, and your pattern tells you exactly how big to do it. But let's say we're done here, and I have this, I just did one, I'm on the front needle. Well, then I just go back to alternating. So instead of going more on the front, I just go back to taking a stitch from the back, and then from the front, alternating like that, and I've rejoined the two pieces, and I have a thumb opening. So that's what you're going to do. Then you go all the way to the other end, and I'll show you how to finish that off. Okay, I'm about to the end here. I've got two stitches left on each of my needles, so I'm going to show you how to finish this off. I'm just holding this because it's natural for me to pick it up and tension yarn uh, when it's hanging there. Also, it kind of tightens up that last stitch, but you don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm on one from the 
back. Careful not to drop the last few stitches off the knitting needles ahead of time as you go. One from the front, pull it through, take the last stitch from the back. And if, you're, if your last stitch is on the front, it doesn't matter, but my last stitch is here on the back. So I'm going to pull it through, and then my last stitch from the front. I'm going to get rid of the needles, pull it through. Okay, and so now what happens here is you're, you have a loop left. You can't just let go of that because then this could all come out. So any tail of yarn that you have in that area, and that's the one I happen to grab, you can just use a crochet hook, pull it through that last loop. It'll secure the whole thing when you weave in the ends. So now I have a second wrist warmer with a thumb opening. That's in the opposite place of the first one. So I have a right and a left hand. And that's all there is to that. If you don't really like this technique, I like it because it's pretty invisible, tidy, nice and firm. But if you don't care for this technique, you can use either three needle bind off or regular grafting Kitchener stitch to join this and then just bind these off separately or do whatever you want to secure those last stitches. I like this though because it's one technique all the way across, tidy, firm and finished.